from Rugby Town, USA. It's a Week 10 clash in the Pacific Rugby Premiership as the Denver Barbarians host visiting Ombak at Infinity Park in Glendale, Colorado. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Infinity Park. I'm Brian Vizard, along with former U.S. Eagle player Dan Power. And, Dan, there's still six weeks left in this PRP season, but I think it's safe to say this is a do-or-die game for both these guys. Oh, you definitely get that feeling here today, Brian. You look at the standings, just two points separating both these outfits. You get the feeling that the winner here has a chance to go on and stake a claim for the championship, while the loser will be looking to 2015. Tell us a little bit more about this on back outfit, though. Well, the Old Mission Beach Athletic Club is a proud team. They've won 15 national championships since 1988. That's in 15s and 7s. They started out this PRP a little bit slow, but are coming off two big wins, including posting a PRP record 69 points in their win over Santa Monica last week. They have some very talented players up and down the line out, especially in their back line with new captain fullback Ian Denham and Eagle fly half Zach Pangelina. And these two have teamed up for some remarkable tries in this PRP. Outside center Chris Terrari is also another outstanding player. He's figured big throughout this season. He's paired in the midfield today with Will Holder, who's on one of the guest players from the USA 7th program. So look for those two to do some serious damage today. Yeah, they have a very exciting background on this on-back outfit. Tell us a little bit more about some of the keys today for victory for them. Well, they got to make their tackles. Last week against Santa Monica, especially in the first half, they let in some soft tries. That was because of missed tackles. They got to do better of that today against a very dangerous Denver team. They want to control the ruck area and give quality ball out to their outstanding back division. They've had some outstanding tries. They want to get that quick ball back. And they put up 55 points unanswered against Santa Monica in the second half against the wind last week. They got some changes in the lineup today, but they want to continue that momentum. And yeah, I definitely, I saw those highlights against Santa Monica. They looked outstanding in that second half. Well, Denver's no slouch. They're obviously a little bit disappointed they lost to Glendale last week. But tell us a little bit more about Barbarians. Oh, what a great club they are situated here in the beautiful city of Denver. They've been around for a long time, and they were one of the hottest teams in the PRP for a long time. They ran into that speed bump last week in the Glendale Raptors, but make no doubt about it, they're still a very talented squad. And they are led by their captain and 10, Taylor Howden. What a great player he's been. But it's been their whole back line who finally hit their wings here. We see him playing against Belmont. This was a few weeks ago. Mike Garrity there. He'll move back to the bench to make way for Hunter Leland. We'll talk a little bit about Leland uh, later on. But uh, their attack has finally started to open up. And it's going to need to be there today against this very impressive on-back outfit. And Max Modo Archibald. He has been fantastic. Such an individual, brilliant player. He works. He's moved to fullback out of his preferred fly, fly half position, but he has just been fantastic for them. And what has Barbarians coach Taylor Howden devised to keep the Barbarians in the playoff hunt? Well, the big key for them today is going to be watch Zach Pendulian. I think that's the key for everyone who plays against Ombak. He is that good a player. Uh, they've brought in Hunter Leland to outside center to help plug up some of those holes that we saw last week against Glendale. They were a little bit weak in that middle channel, and Glendale exploited that. And the last thing, I really want to see them give, stop giving away those silly penalties. A 16-3 to 3 penalty count against them last week. If that continues again here today, uh, they're going to find themselves not only on the wrong side of the penalty count, but the scoreboard as well. Well, it should be a fantastic match against two teams with huge playoff implications. When we come back, we're going to have the national anthem, the lineup, and the first 40 minutes of action. Please stay tuned. Today's match from Rugby Town USA is brought to you by O'Brien Rugby. For all your rugby needs, O'BrienRugby.com. Try Royal Rugby Boots. The first step to a successful rugger starts with their rugby boots. RoyalRugbyBoots.com. Turner Construction, the proud builders of Infinity Park, welcome you to today's match. And by Core Power. Packed with protein, simple ingredients, and an amazing taste. CorePower.com. Hey, hey, hon, would you say it's more circular or spiral? Because if it's, it's spiral, it's serious, but uh, only if it's spiral with red dots. It's definitely spiral, but I'd say it's more bumps than dots. Uh, spiral with bumps. Oh! Enough with the internet diagnosis. Get real answers real fast. At Doctors Express, you can walk in and see our experienced physicians for everything from bumps to breaks for a fraction of the cost and wait time. Doctors Express Urgent Care. What if you could see your kids get home safely without actually being there? Or turn your lights on from somewhere else? Welcome to Xfinity Home from Comcast, the total home security and home control solution combining professional monitoring with online and mobile tools, plus text and email alerts, remote alarm and light controls, and remote video monitoring. 
This is home security reimagined. Xfinity Home from Comcast. Learn more at Xfinity.com slash home. is perfect, or at least it will be, with a little help from Dex. In the book or at DexKnows.com. Dex can help you get results fast and deliver the best local advice so you can get it done right, right here, right now. We should do this more often. Dex, results for the here and now.
start for this round 10 PRP clash between the old Mission Beach Athletic Club of San Diego and the Denver Barbarians. It should be quite a tussle. Both these teams fighting for playoff positions. The top two teams advance, and Dan Power, it should be a beauty today. I'm expecting an absolute cracker of a game. I'm really looking forward to seeing this battle in the back lines. Zach Pangelian versus Taylor Howden, two very creative and dynamic players. We've seen them both score some fantastic individual tries thus far in the PRP. Should be a cracker. Well, both teams are lining up for the national anthem. The referees are all set. And uh, we're going to take it down to the field for our national anthem. Kindly remove your caps for the national anthem of the United States of America. Oh, it should be a fantastic match. Beautiful weather here. Sunny skies in Denver, Colorado. Probably about 55, 60 degrees. And uh, both teams, again, looking forward to a wonderful game. You look at the down back lineup. Mike Weiss, he's healthy again and is going to be at his best. Tied to Samoa, the Eagle, he's back. He's also looking for a big game. Alex Byrne and Patty Manning, two Irishmen in the flanks. They're going to be tough to beat. Zach Pangelinen and Ian Denham leading outstanding talented bat back line for Ambeck and Ambeck is coached by Jason Wood. Definitely a very impressive side there. I'm really looking forward to seeing those backs fire though. We talked about that earlier and here's the Denver Barbarians. You see them in the huddle here. What a fantastic lineup they have. A few players missing from the last few weeks. I've been super impressed with the seven. Brendan Shea, what a fantastic athlete he has been and a fantastic player for the Barbarians. The back line just oozing with class there. Howden, Malifa, and then Hunter Leland. I think he's going to be a great addition to this Barbarian side today. And it should be a fantastic clash in those back lines. Uh, two outstanding fly halves, two outstanding fullbacks, and a lot of great players in the supporting cast. There you can look at the Denver Barbarian. A couple of final last words. The team as Taylor Howden gets into the huddle. The player coach for this Denver Barbarian side. Again, the Barbarian, there you see Taylor. Just the last few instructions before the Barbarians take the field. There you see Lance French and Tom Woods for the Denver Barbarians. And again, we're talking to Lance, and he heard our pregame. He knows it's a doer. He knows it's a doer die game, as does Taylor Howden, the number 10 for this Denver side. It really is a huge game for both teams. You just have to look at the standings and see what it means. Belmont are playing against San Francisco out in California today. So one of those teams are going to play, stay pretty stagnant on this standing. So it's a chance for one of these teams to jump up into third spot and then press for that second spot. There he is, Kurt Weaver. What a fantastic referee he has been for USA Rugby over the years. He will and have the whistle in hand today. Where'd he go? We see Maximo Di Archibald, the fantastic Argentinian-born fullback. He will get things started okay. here at Infinity Park. What a beautiful day for rugby. And there you see referee Weaver. He blew his whistle, and we are underway. Nice kick, only about 15 Back meters. Good tap by, by Tommy Pask. That is taken by the Barbarians. Just outside the 10 meter line. There's Tyson Meek, he gets it to Aloni Sager. Sioni Lager, he takes it up inside the 10 meter line. Tyson Meek trying to dig that ball out for Denver. Gets it out to Taylor Howden, the long pass out. There's a nice wide ball by Denver. On back is up to the task. Again, making the, missing the tackles though. That's a loud, oh, there's a little bit of a misplaced keep on back and capitalize. Zach Pangelina. And it looks like Josh Bart for the outback. Ian Denham in the fly half position. And he gets it out wide to Will Holder. Will Holder strong with ball in hand. The referee saw a knock on there. And it's going to be a 
knock on and a put in for Denver. A couple of knock ons early on. Both teams trying to feel each other out, Dan Power. Yeah, nice ball movement early on from both teams. The Barbarians throwing it wide. The Archer coming back. Malifa putting the ball down and then uh, on back, turning it straight around and attacking themselves. Both teams, uh, obviously, they know the importance of putting up some points here today. Here we go, boys. Not much of a win today. Early on, we expect a little bit of weather later today, possibly, but uh, right now it looks perfect. As we get a good look at our first scrum here. Obviously, our both teams want to Fine. dominate. Solid Check. platform. Denver is looking forward to launch this outstanding back line. Come on up, guys. Boys, both sides before the ball. Wait for the ball to be in. Nice and stable, then the ball. I heard referee Kurt Weaver. I think he said that both teams pushing a little bit prior to that ball being put in. Want the clean scrum here. Tommy Pask, a very athletic number eight for this Denver Barrier inside. Has come on strong. We do have a change in the Denver back Fine. row. Johnny Warner has come in. Back nine, back. Good, solid ball by Denver. There's Taylor Howden, he finds that winger. Oh, big winger coming inside, that's John Godinet. Away, Blue. Here's Denver still with attack. Tommy Pass takes it up a little harder. Not much going on the weak side. Denver's got some numbers out wide. There's a big run by Swanee Lane. Hey, That's a perfect ball. Denver's got some numbers out wide. Can they capitalize? Oh, there's a wrong pass. Referee said that ball went back. Backward. He said play on for Denver. Just outside the 22 meter line. Tyson Meek gets it out wide. Taylor Howden. The Max Yarjavald. Nice looping pass out wide. Finds Tommy Pass. That ball was knocked forward though. I'm back trying to capitalize. That is blue. Referee playing advantage, and that was the flanker, number seven, Taylor. that was Alex Byrne. Great clean out by Almback. And there's, oh, there's a little over, space, Ian Denham saw some space behind that first line of defense, and can he gather? No, Max Archibald up quickly, but Broussard, oh, green. excuse me, Chris Ferrari, who's been outstanding for Almback this year. There's Ian and Denham again, he finds a seam, and that's Will Holder going through. Inside the 22, does he have enough pace to get there? One man to beat, and, it's, and he's gonna do it. Just a nice cut back inside. Yahtzee for Will Holder. Beautiful wow. 50 meter run, Dan. Yeah, the inclusion of these USA 7 residence players paying huge dividends there for Ombak. Will Holder making his presence felt immediately. What a great individual run. He was put through by a beautiful little short ball in the lead up. But how about the heads up play from Denham, the fullback? You talked about him in the pregame. What a great influence he has been on this Ombak squad. The little chip over the top and it all came from that. Yeah, Ian Denham, he's been an outstanding leader for this Ombak squad. Is really, you know, Ombak has been missing some leadership since the, the loss of Dan, pa uh, Dan Payne in 2006. But Ian Denham has really turned this program around and has done well. Looks like an Ombak player down now. Or is that a Denver player? It's all, all the way out to the 22 meter line. Just in front of Zach Pangelina. And referee said, yep, take the kick. Pangelina has been on fire with his kicking all throughout this PRP. And I think that's a Barbarian player that might be down. We'll try to get a number for you. But here's Pangelin, league leader in the PRP. Nicely struck. And it right through the poles. Beautiful kick by Zach Pangelin and putting Ombak up 7-0 about four minutes into this contest. What a great start for Ombak showing their hand in attack there. Pangelin, former Guam national player in soccer. So you'd expect him to strike that ball quite well. It must be a nice change to uh, have it stationary as opposed to moving around on the soccer field. <laughs> yeah, Zach has been a, a wonderful player for this on-back team. And Ian Denham, you're right, Dan, you touched on it. Wasn't it great? Oh, that was Tyson Meek that was down for Denver. You see him getting attention. He has the opportunity to come back and he can clean it up. They can do it in about 10 minutes time. He can, he's elected, uh, he can come back on. There's a takedown, that was number six, Josh Witkowicki. Or Jess Wiskowicki, a late replacement. There's Mike Weiss. Ba again, back at full strength. Jason Wood expecting a big game out of his hooker today. And there's Pangelinin. A nice driving kick. Is that going to find touch? Yes, it is. Just outside the 22 meter line. Let's see if no, the Archival was toying with the idea of a quick lineup, but good coverage that time by Ben Leot Leotigaga for Ombak. Yeah, smart play there from Pangelin. Get points on the board. He knows the territory is going to be important. He just drives that ball down. You've got uh, Leah Tagaga on the wing, who's a fantastic at athlete. And Pangelin chased his own kick well there. Stopped the arch ball with the quick line out. Denver has been pretty effective in their line out. Tommy Pask has been one of their main targets. 
There's a ball up front. I think that was Back Brendan court. Shea that time, that secured ball. But it's a sloppy possession at the 22 meter line. And that's going to be just piling over the top, going to the floor is Denver. It's going to be an opportunity for Ombak. Let's see what the decision is. It's almost exactly on the same place that Pangelinan made that last penalty kick. But here you see Ombak's strategy. They want to score some tries. They elect to go for the line out. Pick up about 10 meters on that kick, but it's going to be their throw in about 15 meters out from the Denver line. Yeah, obviously looking for tries. They know they're going to need as many points as possible if they can get the win here today. They need bonus points on top of it. Those are going to become Guys, crucial in the later Second weeks as we try to figure out who's going to finish that yep. first and second position. Well, Dan, even though Ombak is 4-2, and two, they haven't picked up a whole lot of bonus It'll points throughout. They haven't scored a whole lot of tries other than last week, and they haven't, when they lost those games, they, I don't think they were within seven points, so they didn't pick up a whole lot of bonus points in their first six games. So they're looking for every point they can get now. Ty Tui Samoa can't bring it down. No hands, Blue! Last foot, Blue! It's going to be a Denver ball. They're trying, trying to pick up a little bit of space here for a clearing kick. There's Howden off the left foot. That's going to go into touch. A nice clearing kick outside the 22-meter line. Relieves a little bit of pressure. Over. That's a mistake by Ombak. They need to bring down their own line out inside the 22-meter line. Yeah, we watched Ombak in the warm-ups. They were having a little trouble with the line out. Uh, I don't know if it was a communication issue or a, a jumping guys? issue, but Four. definitely a very important thing because we've seen the Barbarians have been very, very strong in Come that aspect in. of the game. Are you in or out? <laughs> guys, hang on. You're going to have to get at least near the line out. Just hang back with the receiver. It's not going to work, okay? Here we are. I heard the referee just wanted Ombak to get a little quicker to the lineup. They go deep this time. There's a nice steal that time. Oh, that was a nice take that time by Alex Byrne in the Ombak lineup. Green your route, green your route. Nice driving ball by Ombak. They're getting close to the 22 no meter line. Stay left. Now it's coming out. Out to Pangelinen. The flat ball. Out wide. Oh, he needs some help. Rook. Boy, Denver there quickly. Ombak looks like they're going to win this ball. Oh, good steal by Denver on the floor. Playing the ball in offside position. And that was a nice steal. I think that was Johnny Warner, the new guy into the Denver lineup this weekend. Good steal on that Ombak attack. Dan, it looked like an Ombak player. Did get a little bit isolated there. Yeah, they went wide kind of early off that set piece and looked like they got a little bit, uh, like you said, a little isolated out there. And Denver, as we know, have a great back row and they're on the ball very, very quickly. That kick inside the 10 meter line. As you see, Kurt Weaver talked to his side judges. Guys, that is Casilla Wurtzins on this side. How many? Take a good look at the Denver line out. Three, give. Three, give. They got number four, John Pointer at the front of the line. That's where they're going. Nice take. Referee said that ball was in straight. And here comes Taylor Howe. Nice step back inside. Still being hounded by number eight, Patton Malin. But Denver retains possession. There's a lot of space behind that on back line. Nice, powerful run ahead. Here's Denver again with some numbers out wide with a couple of forwards. There's the props playing. Touching going. It's Soani Legger that takes it again on away, inside no the 22-meter line. Ball goes out wide. Taylor Howden. Atom Malipa with a touch. A nice little fix pass back inside. Eight out. With some numbers out wide. Can they capitalize? Oh, oh. oh. Ball said went backwards by the referee. Denver retains possession. That ball goes into touch, and it should be an on back line out. No quick touch. Well, they look really dangerous. Straight you would have liked to have seen them had a bit more speed out here as opposed to the two props at Masick and Ledger combining out here. And then just side to side, but Ombak did well. They, they held off in defense. They played soft, adjusted quickly, and then were able to drive that Denver player over the sideline. Oh, Good stuff from Ombak. Yeah, just that one errant pass over again. It looks like Denver yes. ball nicely between hand and hand. Here's the Ombak line out. To the front of the line, Tui Samoa, oh, stolen, oh, taken down that time by Weiss. Nice play by the hooker. Is over. Here's Ombak again, trying to create some space in the midfield. There's Atta Malipa, does his best. Here's Zach Pangelina, nice step. That's where he's been so effective, but Denver able to corral him, bring him to the floor. Here's the Ombak forwards with a little bit of space. Good hand-to-hand, -hand. Ethan Willis this time, up near midfield. He needs no some hands, help. Captain. Does he get it? Yes, he does. And there's Mike Weiss. Tommy's oh, passed agree, all over him, but he's able to get that ball back, it looks like. Down. Referee says no, ball's trapped, but he is going to award that scrum to Ombak. Ferocious contest at the uh, breakdown from both teams there. Tommy Paskin flying in with a fantastic clean out. Again, 
the Barbarians and Ombak meeting each other right at the line in the trenches. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Some pretty good athletes on both these sides. We've seen some great cohesion between the forwards and backs on both sides. As you get a look at number nine, Andrew Locke. Crouch. Another on one of the guest players from the USA 7th program playing for Ombak. Okay, let's see Ombak scrum. Pretty stable as well, Patty Mallon. Oh, he's corralled quickly though by the Denver flanker. And now that get it out wide, Zach Pangelina and misses out. Oh, two man miss. Good pass by Pangelina. Just couldn't be held by Ian Denham. That's a knock on. It's gonna be a scrum awarded to Denver. Again, a few early handling errors from both teams, just spoiling the opportunities they have at the moment. But that was a great ball, wasn't it? The double miss pass there from Pangelina. Denham may have just uh, caught uh, taking a look what was in front of him before he had the ball there. Yeah, it looked like he had a little bit of space in front of him. He had men on either side of him as well. But just an, an opportunity gone amiss for Ombak. Denver did well on their last scrum. They got great stable ball. Here's Tommy Pask again at the back. Crouch. Find. Set. We still have Tyson Meek on the side. It looks like he's getting ready to come back in the game. It looks, might be an early foot. Early foot, I think it was, by Ombak. And they, Denver takes a quick tap penalty. There's Tommy Pask about the 22 meter line. No ruck, no ruck. There's Tawani Ledger, that's the three or four handles that he's had all around the 22 meter line so Last far one. today. Taylor Howden, the pass was a little low, he does well, awesome to leap, a nice little quiz Not pass. Held. No held. And I believe that was Hunter no Leland that made that difficult catch. Backward. Good steal that time by Ombak, they came in tight. Another step inside, no looking no for no space. No and that's at number seven, Alex Byrne, the Irishman. Release screen. He did well. I'm back retaining possession. They have numbers out here to the right if they can find them. Ian Denna back inside to Andrew Locke. Andrew Locke, now he's looking for help. He's not finding it. He a little tip over the top. Oh, referee playing advantage. It was a one on five opportunity. It should be kick or kick, I would think. It should be a kick up near Captain. the goal post. Time's Andrew off. Locke kicked ahead. Maxi Archival, who caught, caught flat footed, Kill. impeded Kill. the progress of Andrew that Locke, and that's why the Referee awarded the tr uh, penalty against Ombak. Now, if I'm Ian Denham, the captain of Ombak, I'm straight up to the referee to tell him, I want that penalty where the ball landed, sir, which is his option, where he kicked it or where the kick lands. And no one's going to have to talk to him. Obviously, Pangelian would probably be pretty confident from both. I'd rather take a shot 10 meters out from the post as opposed to the 25 that they're looking at now. Early in the game, going off. Wow, an early yellow call. That is a huge call. Just. 12 minutes into the game, and a key member of this Denver squad as well, Maxi Archival. Good call for the, the option, the right. professional foul. And Captain, he's going to be in the bin for the next go, 10 minutes. And that should Captain. be a huge boost for Ombak. In, it's an option, backer up. Penalty kick option up. Here we go. And then right now there we the go. Try line. Up. So there's obviously some hold up in, uh, in the card there. Now yeah, what the Weavers obviously land. determined here is that it wasn't an accidental uh, yeah. obstruction. Yeah. That the Archival yeah. actually yeah. committed to getting in Locke's way and has dropped the shoulder into him. And that's why he's given him the yellow card. Like I said, that's a big call though for an obstruction play. But uh, Kurt Weaver feels that the Archival committed to that. He could have pulled out and he didn't. He chose to hit the player and that's why he's been yellow carded. Yeah, it almost looked like he didn't have to do that, too. It looked like Denver had that ball covered, even though uh, Andrew Locke did have a head of steam. It looked like another Denver player was back there. But this should be a relatively easy chip shot and for this Zach Pangelinen. This is tough when you lose your fullback, too, because it's a, a player on the field you tend to forget about. He plays back in the defensive line. You'll see it often. If a fullback gets yellow carded, the wingers will often forget there's no one back there. A little chip over the top or a kick. Next thing you know, no one's at home. A good chase. Pangelian's a smart enough player to realize that, and he's got the foot to do it as well. Well, it's going to be a huge back line shuffle now for Denver. Let's see who they put back there. It looks like it's Tyson Meek on the field. I'm not sure if I see the fly half or the uh, scrum half yet. I don't, I don't think he's come back on. But it should be about nine minutes now for Ombak with a man advantage. They've been finding some seams in this Denver defense. It's a good heads up play by Andrew Locke. Here's the kick. Just inside the 20 dude, Patrick Mellon gets it out to Ian Denham. Ian Denham orchestrating the attack. Good to have a, almost a player coach on the field in Ian Denham. There's Denham there playing fly half as well. Kai Tui Samoa, big man. Didn't get a whole lot of minutes with the U.S. team. And Jason Wood expects a huge effort for him today. Here's Ian Denham. He's got some move out, some men out wide, and it's Zach Pangelinen. 
He's got one man with him. He cuts back in, cuts outside. Oh my goodness, look at him go. Beautiful skills by Zach Pangelin. And and increasing his points lead in the PRP. What a great effort, Dan Power. And there we see the loss of Max Yardshorn having no fullback. Kyle Hitt, usually an outside center playing on the wing today, had absolutely no clue how to defend that. Pangelin stepped inside and outside. And there's a happy man right there, Jason Wood, the coach. He told us in the pregame how important this game was and how he's going to rely on that man, Zach Pangelin, to bring them back here. What a great individual try. He scored at least three or four of those this year, though, Pangeline. What a player. He has an outstanding step, and he turned that last defender around for Denver. First, he looked like he was going to step in and then turned it right back outside. Once that defender made the move, he had him tied up and was able to eat, uh, just outpace that last cover defense. But what an outstanding individual effort. And this kick right on the sideline, just about, just about a meter in. And again, Pangeline, one of the top kickers. Definitely in the PRP, but in the country. I mean, he's been outstanding whenever he gets an opportunity. Just outside the 22 meter line, looking to extend the lead to 17 nil in favor of Ombak. Nicely struck as it hooking in, just stays out to the right of the post, 15 nil. So we're about 15 minutes into this game. And again, Jason Wood has to be very happy with the way his team has played so far. They sensed the man advantage on the outside, Dan, and they took advantage of it. Yeah, we talked about the importance of this clash, and it really looks at this point, I know it's just 15 minutes in, that Ombak are a team that want to go on. They're running into form where Denver seem a little shell-shocked even, uh, that they're not playing the way that we've seen the Barbarians play these last few weeks. Well, that's not going to make things any easier, too, being a man down. Here's Howden's restart. That's a nice high kick inside the 22-meter line. Tui Samoa's making the call on this one. Takes his big body up. Takes on three or four Denver Barbarians. Still not held. On back sets the nice ruck. Quick ball out to Pangolin. And there's an unforced there. You don't see that too often. Pangolin just took his eye off the ball briefly. Forced that knock on, and it's going to be a put-in for Denver. So again, they're looking for every any opportunity they can get right now. Oh, definitely. And another good opportunity just to soak some time off the clock as well while the Archival's off the field. They're in the right part of the field, too. They want to play on back and try to make it as hard as on back as possible to get any points. We'll have a look at their configuration. Obviously, with a player down, it sort of makes on back's job a little easier in defense because you've got no fullback here, so you can pretty much defend what's in the line, what you can see. And then matched up one short on that side. They've got two on the blind side defense on back. As it comes out, Tommy Pass picks up and goes to blind side. That athletic eight man, he's brought down, though. Jennings digs in at scrum half, moves it across the ledger. Again, he has been busy, as you mentioned. Goes forward into the 22. Penalty coming here. The referee's got him for offside, it looks like. I think, it might, have been, I think it might have been tied to his Samoa that came in from the side that time. Not back. Looked like they had the steal, but the referee said, no, you came in from the side. And this is a good opportunity here for Denver to get on the board. I like this decision. Get some three points while you can. Take a little time off that yellow card as well. Oh, definitely. I'd be pulling both my socks up, making sure my jersey was tucked in, tuck the mouth guard into the sock, just suck that time off the clock. And there we go. While well, we've got a little break in play, we'll have a look at the uh, Infinity Park Event Center. Infinite fun and infinite possibilities. Book your company's picnic or event at Infinity Park. Infinityparkeventcenter.com. I've been to a few events here and they are fantastic. Gets, uh, they put a good show together. As we see Jennings there, the replacement scrum half slots that penalty. Takes the score to 15 points to three. Still on back leading the Barbarians. 18 minutes gone in the first half. If you've just joined us, the Barbarians down a player. Maximo Diarchival, their star fullback. Yellow carded for a late obstruction on a kick. And they have suffered too with Zach Pangelin. Punished them with a try. They come back to halfway. First time uh, Pangelin's had to kick off in 18 minutes. Obviously a great kick with the ball. Let's see where he puts this one. Nice high. Oh, look at that look kickoff. At that. That's sensational. Is it too far? No. It's, oh, that was going to be knocked on if, if uh, um, Van Cleric Cotret got his hand on the ball. But Denver secures possession. Quickly up is tied to Isamoa. Nice tackle by Weiss. No, he breaks out of that tackle. Up the way. Oh, another powerful run. That's Brendan Shea. Two big hits. Straight up, and there's the skipper, Logan Collins. He's been leading by example all season long. The three on four out this way, but Taylor Howden saw some space behind Pat Mallon. There was no winger back, and that's an educated kick by Taylor Howden. Right outside the 22-meter line. It's going to be an on-back put-in, but again, a little more time will tick off that clock, and that was a good passage. 
by the Denver Barbarians. Yeah, great passage. He looked up. He, see, he saw he didn't have much, uh, much outside him to attack with, so he just slotted in behind. Pat Mallon, the eight man, was out in the wing, so he knew he was pretty safe on the counter attack there. And what a great option here on the 22. Another great line out from on back with Wiki there. Pulls it down. Comes back. Andy Locke. At the nine position, just marshalling this ball downfield, not one. really going anywhere. Oh, there you heard the referee says you got to use it, and they, they will. Hurry. It's kind of messy here. Ball comes down though. Uh, He'll pull it up, yeah. and it will be a barbarian's foot in. Big play from Denver there. Boy, that was okay. a real sloppy play by Ambeck. They had the ball at the back of that mall. Referee said play it, and then I don't know what happened. It got tied up, and it's going to be a Denver put in. Outstanding work by the Denver forwards. Tommy Pass came away with that ball. I'm not sure if he was involved or not. It's going to be big here for Denver. Being a fullback down, look for a lot of eight-man picks. You don't want to give yourself a man short in the back line because you're missing your fullbacks. He's not going to be able to inject. So Tommy Pask almost has to play scrum half. Will Jennings almost has to bump out to a fly half, and then they can attack off that. It's going to slow them a little bit off the back of the scrum, and Ombak's going to have a tough time reading that more so than just a straight 9-10 pass. Well, there's no one covering the weak side off the scrum for Ombak. Just wit to wiki is... Black, here we are. Black scrum. Is the blind side flanker. Tommy Pass likes to pick up and go to the right side. Zach Pangelin is kind of leaning that way just in case that happens. But Denver's first priority now getting good platform. They've had that so far in their scrums. We're about midway through this first half. We're still about four minutes into the yellow card penalty by Max DiArchival, but it is going to be a Denver put in. Good scrum again. Good solid platform. Taylor Howden. Nice flat pass to Atta Malipa, but that's not handled well. The little pass back outside. Good hands by Ombak. They continue to march. Good rucking. Good quick ball. Out wide again. Forward, Ian Denham. He's been unleashing his back so far. Across midfield now is Ombak. And there's a Denver player coming in from the uh, coming in right from the side. And that's going to be another opportunity here for Zach Pangelin to get a little territory here. Going to try to go deep into this Denver half, trying to pick up a, a bunch of territory for that on-back lineup. Dan, what have you seen so far from this uh, touring on-back side that's impressed you? I really like that back line. Pangeline, obviously, and Holder have scored two great individual tries. But Andy Locke playing out of position. He's usually a fly half. He's in at scrum half. I thought he's been outstanding as well. His service has been very good for this first 20 minutes. And again, reaping the rewards of that affiliation with the USA 7th residency, residency program, being able to use these guys who don't make the touring squad as guests is definitely helping on back. Yeah, there's still work though, trying to mix and match all those guys. There's, there's a lot of talent. And uh, Jason Wood has done a pretty good job this year. That ball's just batted back. Locked as well to secure possession. There's Ty Tui Samoa. Takes on three or four barbos. So they're able to penetrate in. There's Locke getting that out wide. Zach Pangelin looking for options. Oh, a nice little pass. That time by number 14, Ben Lietagiga. Lietagaga scores the Ombak's third try of the day. And what a clever little pass by the fly half, Zach Pangelin. Well, we saw the player looping around. It looked like Holder was coming around Pangelin. Denver fell for it, hook, line, and sinker as they attacked Pangelin. And both Holder left a huge hole for Lietagaga to streak through. We saw a diving Sioni Ledger, couldn't get an ankle tap on him. And then Leah Tagaga, what a fantastic athlete. He is also in with the USA 7s program. He is an on-back player though. And uh, on-back, looking sensational so far. Well, when they hit, talking to Jason Wood, when they've had ball in hand, and I guess a lot of teams could say that, when they, when they, get, when they knock off the silly mistakes, they are really a dangerous team, especially with Pangeline and Leah Duchel. He's just been outstanding in just about every game he's played so far for this on back team. Here's Pangelina trying to add to the tally. And he slots that brilliantly. 22 to three now is the score in favor of on back. Yeah, they've looked very impressive. Of course, Denver's still playing with a man down as Maximo Diacho. He is back on the field now. He's done his 10 minutes in the sin bin. And he returns to the field. Let's see if he can calm these barbarians side down. They were able to put three points on the board while he was off the field. But on back replied with two converted try, sorry, a converted try and a try at their own during that time. And and here's Diarchval with ball in hand. He's going to start this restart off for Denver. Another nice high restart out to a 22 meter line. That's going to give on back trouble. 
Byrne does well, just flings it back. That could be a dangerous pass, and it is. Denver secures possession just inside. Oh, yes, beautiful play. Conversion was good, so it's 22 to three in favor of Trump. Okay? But this should get the Barbarians. Let's see what they do here. They're gonna elect to go for the scrum. They need to score some tries here. They're 19 points adrift at 22 to three. With about 15 minutes left in this first, first half, they want to get on the board. Here you see the player coach, Taylor Howden, he's firing some instructions to his forwards. Logan Collins, the skipper of this side, and second row today. He's been outstanding for this Barbarian side. Crouch. They've played Fine. very flat thus far. They're Fire. a lot of short platforms. We saw the interchange between Malifa and Leland actually Fine, worked as Hunter was able to hold onto the Fire. ball and Black stick his warning. nose through. We, we saw Black in the last Trump. set piece, Howden unable to get that ball to Malifa and the ball went to ground. So let's see if they play with a little bit more depth here, a little bit more Crouch. subtlety on their attack and see if they Fine. can do some individual brilliance there instead set. of trying to force that pass in. Well, they're getting some good solid scrum ball. And here's another good scrum. Tommy Pass gonna take a stab around the weak side. Witkowicki's in his face. Pass oh, wait, does well. Marches it down just about five meters out. Will Jenny gets it out to Legger. Ledger's Go been uh, used a lot for some hard yards. And we get another infraction. Not releasing the tackled player, I think it was. And that's going to be another penalty here. Taylor Howes' decision again. Do they go for the scrum? They see they go for the scrum. They go for the scrum again. They've been getting some good scrum ball. They're five meters out. A little more room on the sweet side if Pass wants to take a stab. He got thwarted last time, but was able to retain possession. Let's see what they do here. They've been getting outstanding scrum ball. There you have a great look at the back lines there. On back, you're gonna have to get up pretty quickly here. Always trouble when you're defending your own goal line. You wanna get up as quick as possible. That first five meters, give Fine. yourself a bit of breathing space and then Set. let the play unfold in front of you. Try to get the read on the attack. But that's when danger men like Taylor Howden and Nata Malifa can really take advantage. The ball. Oh, hands in the, hands in the scrum that time, I think they called by Onback. Quick tap penalty. And there's Tommy Pass. He's met quickly by Patrick Mallon. Denver still has possession. They're getting close. Nice defensive play that time by Alex Byrne for on back. Legger again. About three meters out now. Denver still with possession. They got some men out wide. On back is there to meet them. Oh, there's the turnover that on back needed. The knock on about two meters out. It's kind of a low pass, Dan. Tough to handle, but still a ball that Denver should have secured. Yeah, you can see. Taylor Howden screaming in his place to get up off the ground the previous play. He's trying to run a pod format there of just having three pods of forwards hitting left, right, left, right to try to suck on back in before they attack wide. And the players are just too slow getting off the ground. You see how frustrated he was getting to get up, get up. And uh, as you see, they weren't set. The pass wasn't the greatest and he drops the ball. Huge let off for on back. Well, still in the danger zone here. Just five meters out from their own line. It's gonna be an on back put in. Looking for stable ball for Zach Pangelina to make a clearing kick, or do they get it out wide? They might try to, or there's a, Pat Mallon picks it up at number eight, trying to create a little space. They get it for Zach Pangelina, he drives a kick, is that gonna stay in? No, that goes out. A nice clearing kick about 30 meters out, where it's gonna be a Denver put in. This ball is still live, if Denver, no, Denver doesn't go for the quick line out. But Ombak catches a break on that knock on, relieves a little bit of pressure. And now it's going to be a Denver line out, 25 meters out or so from their own line. As you get a look at Tim Miller, the Denver hooker, going to throw in down the line. You got Logan Collins at the tail of the line out. And John Pointer, who we've seen win some good ball up front for this Denver Barbarian side. Tommy Pask and Johnny Warner out in the back line, along with Brendan Shea, that whole back row. Oh, there's a nice take. They got some room out wide. There's a nice pass out wide. There's Hunter Leland inside the 22 meter line. Can he cut back? He does. Can he score? Oh, a beautiful try by Denver. Great lead by Hunter Leland to score the try. What a beautiful set play from the Denver Barbarians. Playing numbers in the line out. Pulled down by Johnny Warner. What a fantastic grab by the replacement number six. He's made a great impact since he's come on the field. And let me tell you, Hunter Leland, we talked about uh, Rob Hol uh, Will Holder, sorry, Rob's son, Will, making his presence felt. 
Hunter Leland, another player, guest player for the Denver Barbarians with a beautiful individual try, beating three, four on back players on his way to the try line. What a great little set piece from the Barbarians. Definitely needed that as we approach 30 minutes gone in the first half. Takes the score to 22 points to eight. Conversion to come. The Archibald slots this will bring him back to within 12 points. Important try scored by Denver. You hit it on the head, Hunter Leland. You thought he was going to play an influential part in this game today, and Denver really needed to get on the board with some points, and they did with their first try of the ball game, trying to cut more into this lead. It's 22 to 8 right now. The Archibald's kick, nicely struck, and the conversion is good. 22 to 10, ball game. Good reply by this Denver Barbarian side at the 30 minute mark. We got 10 minutes left of this game, in this first half rather. I'm back now, 22 to 10. Do they have an answer for that last Denver try? Zach Pangelin and last restart he had was a beauty. Very high, just at the 22 meet. Look at the height he gets on those 22s. That ball's batted back, the referee said, oh, he said batted forward. And that's gonna be a scrum to the Denver side. Nice high kick though. I mean, that's plenty of time for the on back guys to get down there and grab it. I'm not sure why they're just not securing possession. Denver doesn't seem like anything to do with it. What an incredible kick with the ball he is. Those restarts, they, they've got to be like a third higher than what the Denver Barbarians restarts are. They're incredible. And here we go with our next scrum, Will Jennings, the replacement scrum up. I think Tyson Meeks today is probably fine. He had a Set. big head gash on that uh, first on back try. There's the scrum. A little bit less stable that time up, and that's why they said referee, referee on back said that Ethan Willis was boring in, or actually it was Josh Bart boring in on that last scrum. And that's going to allow Denver to relieve some pressure here. Boring is when the prop is angles in on that scrum, and the referee saw it. He was right there. And that's going to be a line out. Now for this Denver Barbarian team, of course, yeah, all those front rows, they got to keep the ball straight. They got to keep the scrums going forward. Five. Now it's going to be a Denver line out. Tim Miller now. That last line out takes Johnny Warner at the back, and this time it's John Pointer. It's an overthrow. That's going to be easily handled by Pat Mellon at the back. He gets it out to Andrew Lockter. Some space out wide. Good hands by the big man, Ty Tui Samoa. He takes on three or four Denver Barbarians. Can he get that ball back? Yes, he does. They come back Backward. strong. That ball's still alive. Ethan Willis secures possession that time for Rombach. Went right through one forward's hands into another. There's Ian Denham, doesn't have a whole lot, and he is pummeled Wait, back in the tackle by Otto Malifa and I think Hunter Leland. Rombach retains possession though. That time was Jesse Witka Wiki. There's Ethan Go Willis ahead. again with another touch. Rombach has some numbers out to the right hand side. Zach Pangelinen, is that too heavy? No, that's a beautiful touch finder just inside the 22. A well weighted kick once again. I was kind of surprised on the kick, Dan. Were you just there? It looked like they had some numbers out wide. Yeah, they looked a little bit scattered there. Probably not a bad option. They've got the lead. And as we have a look now, the youth rugby. Play youth rugby with our youth program. All skill levels welcome. Register online at glendaleraptors.com. That is the Glendale Youth Rugby Program. What a fantastic summer of events they have coming up in that youth program. Five. And here's the Denver line out now. That last one, a long throw over the top, did not go well. This time they Good. keep it simple, go to the front Outside. of the line out, bring it down securely. Oh, wait, we'll Trying to drive that ball. Good. That ball's still yeah, caught yeah. up. Can they get the ball down? Yes, they get it down, they get it back. And there's Taylor Howden. That's not Locked the best on. kick in his repertoire. Warren Catrick gets it. He saw a little seam in that Denver defense that quickly closed, but he's able to get it back. There's not much on back support there, and Tommy Pass is going to come in and rip that ball out, but the referee said Max DiArchival came in from the side, I believe it was, and that's going to be a penalty for on back. And let's see what they do here. It'd be an easy three-pointer, and I think that's the right decision. Ian Denham says, let's get the three points, and right when we say that the wind swirls a bit, picks up, and it's going to be right in Zach Pangelinen's face, but he's been outstanding with his kicking so far today. He missed one, but it was just a near miss, just to the right of holes. And this, again, looking to bring back the lead to 15 points. On back ahead right now, 22 to 10. Guys are in the ruck. They're taking so the second guy out. That's the first one. Out the first the one. The, uh, up to the sideline, there's a little slope. The hill goes up. It's always tough kicking down that hill. But we've seen him be perfect at passing that today. 
Denver was dead, very isolated there, the on-back player. Denver got in the numbers. It's unfortunate to get called coming from the side, though. And um, Will Holder, he thought about going for it there. He was looking to the sideline for a line-out or a quick tap, but Cam Julian steps in, and he'll take a shot at three points here. We get a great shot from behind here. Beautiful camera work from oh, the boys. Oh, my goodness. Out. What a fantastic strike. That's, that that's why you go for goal when you got a guy like that. He has been kicking beautifully. That was well struck again, right to the center of the poles, despite the breeze. He played it beautifully. Now Denver's looking for a reply. Got about six minutes left in this first half. Comeback's got to be pretty happy with the way they played so far. They've been making their tackles, with the exception of the one Denver try. That was pretty much the lone break. Denver's missed a couple of opportunities. There's a long kick that time by Archival. Surprised Tangelin and played that ball. That could have been all the way back to midfield as it is. A clearing kick up by us on top of the stadium. <laughs> and that's going to be a Denver line out about 35 meters out. But if, if he would let that ball go, Dan, they, go on, they got short end goals here. It could have been a ball all the way out to the midfield line. It's a pretty solid field under foot too. I'm surprised he didn't let it go. You can never trust the ball when it bounces yeah. though. So it's probably best just to catch it if he had a catch on it. But uh, definitely, that thing rolls over the dead ball, and we're coming right back to halfway. Let's see what Denver does again. Now they're trying to Logan. No, nope, it's going to be Pointer up front. Nicely taken down, nicely driven ahead. There's Will Jennings gets the ball back for Denver. Now he gets it back to, for Denver. Taylor Houghton out to Adam Malipa. Malipa's been looking for a seam. He finally found one. And that could be re-rucked by Ombak. Is that, oh, I think that was stolen. Back by on back. Are they going to come away with it? Yes, they are. And there's some men out wide. They got Ian Denham. Seeing his options. Will Holder see some space again. And that time, just a little bit heavy. And that goes into touch on a fly where it's going to come all the way back for a Denver line out. Yeah, you mentioned the breeze has kind of picked up here in the last few minutes. I think they just got the better of that ball and pushed it across out over the sideline on the full. But great turnover from on back. But Malifa just losing his footing there as he stuck his head through. He has kind of looked frustrated in this opening part of the first half, looking for an opportunity. He gets it there, and he looks very dangerous. Well, that's where he really is dangerous. When he finds those little gaps after hanging on or passing the ball throughout the game, he just took a little seam that time. It looked like he took a shot in the head. That might have been why he went down to the floor so quickly. Looked like maybe in the eye region, but it's going to be a Denver line out here. Again, a short line. They take it back. Will Jennings gets it out to Taylor Howden. Howden. Nice big hit up by Kyle Hitch. He stays on his feet. Look at the man go. All the way down to about the 22 meter line. Logan Collins, he takes it up ahead as well. There's a dump play, the referee said play on. They got some men out wide. And there's Hunter Leland again, back inside. Adam Alifa, five meters out. Look at Ian Denham trying to drag him into touch. He can't do it. Denver retains possession. Here's Taylor Howden, the flat pass out to Logan Collins. Denver hits the ruck. They still have possession. It looks like it's going to be defensed out wide. Taylor Howden, the long pass out. And is that oh, another nice stretch? That time it was Brendan Shea. It looked like that scored the try. How about the beautiful long spiral pass? Reminded me of uh, Cliffy Lyons, Andrew Johns back in the day, those long torpedo passes out wide. And Brendan Shea. I can't get enough of Brandon Shea. Let me tell you, he is not the breakout player of the year for the PRP. Then I'm not here. He's been outstanding all season long. And the Barbarians, just like that, are they back into it at 25 points to 15. Well, we've seen some beautiful tries, some well-worked tries by Denver. Maybe more of an individual effort from Ombak, but some outstanding tries nonetheless. That's our fifth try of this first half. And it was a good reply by Denver. They needed to stay in touch, and they did just that. 25-15 now. As we're coming to a close in this first half, just a couple of minutes left. Let's see if Max the Archival can add the extras. Yeah, Hunter Leland, though, I've been pretty impressed with the way he's been running, too. You know, I was, I was a little worried because they have so many fly halves with Taylor, Asa, and Maximo already playing all fly halves. Hunter, as well, I think, is a natural fly half. You kind of get the feeling that uh, there's just too many creative players, but he's just run some great lines today. And I think we got to give some credit to Kyle Hitt. He's the one who took that ball up hard inside that 22-meter line. And how about that kick? We're on a kicking display by two of the best kickers in the competition as Max DiArchival added the extras to make it 25 to 17. That's a big hit back. Takes him to within eight points with about one and a half minutes to go. Let's have a look at this Pendulian restart. 
I don't think the people watching at home get an idea. These are world class. I mean, these are what you see uh, some of the best teams in the world. Another one, not a little, oh, little squirrely off it. the feet. Or off the foot that time, Tommy, Tommy Cat pass, gathers. He takes it right into Alex Burns. Will Jennings Go sees in. Taylor Howden. Ata Malifa, again, they find some space out wide. And there's that man, the big man, Kyle Hitch. He's just corralled by number 14 for on back there was Ben Leah Tagaga. And it's gonna be turnover ball, looks like. Does on back have that inside the 50 meter line? Yes, they do. They're gonna come away with it. Ian Denham, I love the way that Ian Denham has been filling in that fly half as Pangelin is caught out. There's Ian Denham, he's got some men out wide. Does he have the pace? He has a little bit of a shot. A little bit of a step, Logan Collins quickly there. No, I think Logan Collins is gonna get pinged. Just going right over the ball carrier. And he was the only Denver Barbarian jersey there, so it had to be a penalty against yeah, Logan. Didn't really make much of an attempt to stay on his feet there, Collins. Just dove straight over the ball, killed any chance. But And this is an interesting call. He's about 58. He's going to take a shot at the post here for three points. Well, you saw that uh, the referee, or Jason Wood, wanted a kick into the corner, but uh, Zach Pangelin thinks, you know what, I think I can make this. It's uh, just uh, right at the mid-stripe, midfield stripe. He's feeling good about it. He's been kicking the ball outstandingly well so far, but a little breeze has picked up, so this could be a challenge. Now, it is possible. Uh, a, few, a few years ago, I was, we were here for the, uh, the Churchill Cup, and we came down to warm up, and we were putting them over from about 65. So at altitude, it is possible a guy like Pangelian can do it. But we had a little bit of breeze at our back, and he's got it in his face a little bit. So it'll be a tough kick. And plus, I think it's going to be the last play of the game, or the last play of this half. So that might be uh, come into his decision process as well. Here's Pangelian. I'm back. He's looking ready to cover this kick in case it does fall short or wide. He struck it well. Does he have the distance? Yes, he does. He had plenty of distance. Beautiful. Range goal, what an outstanding kick by Zach Pangelin. And then that closes the half as the teams head to the locker room. It's 28-17 in favor of Ambach at the half. When you come back, we'll have a halftime highlight and analysis. Please stay tuned. First Bank's doing most of the work for me, so got a lot of extra time on my hands. Oh, so what you been up to? Everyone, remember to have your parking validated at the end of the day. Now let the battle commence! <laughs> golf, uh, a lot of golf. Worry less about your mortgage and more about your free time with a mortgage made easy at First Bank. Hey, hey, hon. Would you say it's more circular or spiral? Because if it's, it's spiral, it's serious, but uh, only if it's spiral with red dots. It's definitely spiral, but I'd say it's more bumps than dots. Uh, spiral with bumps. Oh! Enough with the internet diagnosis. Get real answers real fast. At Doctors Express, you can walk in and see our experienced physicians for everything from bumps to breaks for a fraction of the cost and wait time. Doctors Express Urgent Care. What if you could see your kids get home safely without actually being there? Or turn your lights on from somewhere else? Welcome to Xfinity Home from Comcast, the total home security and home control solution combining professional monitoring with online and mobile tools, plus text and email alerts, remote alarm and light controls, and remote video monitoring. This is home security reimagined. Xfinity Home from Comcast. Learn more at Xfinity.com home.
Welcome back to Infinity Park, where Ombak is in clinging to a 28-17 lead on the strength of a strong first half kicking performance by Zach Pangelin and, and Dan Power. It was a very good first half of rugby. There were some errors made on both sides, but we saw some outstanding tries from both sides as well. Yeah, we definitely did. You take out the yellow card, and that's 12 points taken off the Ombak score, and it's 17-6 to the Denver Barbarians. I know rugby math doesn't always work like that, but it's had a huge bearing on the score. It really has been a seesawing match. It's been dominance by both teams for periods of times, but overall, Ombak have really looked the better of the two teams here today. Well, we've seen some great individual performances from Ombak, especially uh, Zach Pangelini, as we get ready for our next game, Glendale Raptors versus Park City Haggis. That's today at 3 o'clock Mountain Time, and live on RTUS on Ustream. Uh, but it should be a, a wonderful game between those two sides. And interesting because, you know, the Raptors on top of the table, and again, we talked about the Haggis that uh, they're trying to get into the, the PRP. Yeah, there's been strong assurances out of Utah to the PRP that they're going to put together a strong cab, a uh, strong squad. There, you have a look at some of the uh, some of the boys here, and oh, that's going to be an absolute crack of a game. We saw last week Glendale took on Denver. The return match now, Raptors versus Barbarians next Saturday at 3 p.m. April 12th. That will have huge implications if Denver can get up here come back and beat on back which is going to be a huge ask in itself then turn around next week and try to beat the uh, glendale raptors that would put them right back in contention well it should be an outstanding second 40 minutes of play when we come back we're going to have that second 40 minutes of action please stay with us Live sports on TV, online, and now on your iPad and iPhone. Xfinity, only from Comcast. Hampton Inn and Suites. Experience the sweet life in Cherry Creek. First Bank is the largest locally owned bank in Colorado. Headquartered in Lakewood, visit us at efirstbank.com. And by The Y. We're for youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. YMCA. Have you ever noticed how skeptical people are of free? As if the word free automatically means something must be wrong. But what if free really just meant free? Get mobile banking alerts and great customer service and get it free. The new place is perfect, or at least it will be with a little help from Dex. In the book or at DexKnows.com, Dex can help you get results fast and deliver the best local advice so you can get it done right, right here, right now. We should do this more often. Dex, results for the here and now. Oh. You all right? I think I dislocated my shoulder. On a weekend? <sighs> You'll never get a doctor on a weekend. <sighs> Enough with doctor's hours. At Doctors Express, we know accidents happen at inconvenient times. That's why we're open weekends and extended hours for everything from fevers to falls. Doctors Express Urgent Care.
And Zach Pangelina is ready to kick off for on back here in the second half. They are ahead 28-17 over the Denver Barbarians. And a very good first half from both these sides. On back with three tries. And the Denver Barbarians with two. And of course the Denver Barbarians, Dan, were hit with that sin bin offense. That really put a dent in their uh, attack. Yeah, we saw them back score two quick tries in that 10 minutes. And that hurt them a lot. You look at the points differential, 28 to 17. That is made a huge bearing on the game. But this is going to be a huge 40 minutes in terms of not only for these two teams, but the entire PRP. This next 40 minutes is going to play a huge role. Yeah, and very important for both these sides, as we talked about. Referee Kurt Weaver had a strong first half. And he is just about to get this second half underway. Zach Pangelin has been kicking outstanding so far for this on-back team. And it's great to have a kicker put your team on the front foot. He's been kicking for territory well. He's been kicking for points well on his restarts, with the exception of the last one has been outstanding. Let's see what he does here on this first kick. And we are off here in the second half. Again, kind of a wobbly kick. Tommy passes, gathering under it, gets hit right as he takes this ball. And ball is retained, though, by Denver Barbarians. Black Taylor hole. Howden sees a little bit of space in behind deep. And Pat Mallon comes back well. To take that, yeah, we're gonna have an infraction. We're coming back offside, I think. Offside, there's players in front of the kick. I guess it had to be. No quick. And now what? Four. Well, uh, Zach Pangelin was just—I <laughs> don't know. I thought he knocked on, but I guess he was just toying with the referee and the, the barbarians. Hold. Yeah. This is a smart four. decision going for three. Zach Pangelin playing a little bit of silly buggers there, which I, I think it fooled everyone. I was wondering what he was doing and. I think Kurt Weaver got caught for a second there <laughs> as well. But yeah, smart decision. Get the points, this will stretch them out to a 15 point lead, which obviously out that uh, two try buffer zone, which is a very safe place to be for on back. Yeah, and again, not a good start by the Denver Barbarians. A silly offense that was. And you know that a player with Pangelinan's kicking ability is gonna punish you most of the time. And he did it once again. He's just been kicking on fire today, lights out. And Denver's got to be aware that any penalty at midfield or even inside or just shortly outside, Pangelina is going to make you pay. Yeah, that's not the start that the Denver Barbarians are after. Another three points they have to make up for now. And it's going to be DiArchival who's going to restart for the Barbarians. Tommy Pask, Logan Collins on the outside flank. They want to bring this ball down. Nicely block. tabbed back that time by Logan Collins, right to Tommy Pass. Good communication between the two forwards. Suwani no Ledger takes no it up no hard. Me. Pat Mellon tries to get his hands on it, can't do it. Taylor Howden, there's the step inside. We haven't seen Taylor with ball in hand. Now he's got some men out wide. There's Hunter Leland. John Godin that just powers through. Is he down? Can he down? Yes, he can. And that was number 14, John Godinet for the Barbarians. Big, powerful run. And again, another good, well-worked team try by the Denver Barbarians. Yeah, Taylor Howden came into this game under a little bit of a fitness cloud, having some issues with his lower back. He's brushed those off, and we haven't seen him run, the, uh, run a lot this game. You mentioned that. He finally uh, strapped one on. Big left foot step as he goes through. And then John Godinet, what a big man he is out in the wing. He just steamrolled his way to the try line. Big hit back from the Barbarians. Trying to get back within seven with a successful conversion. They can do that. It's 31-22 now. The Archibald's got a ma match. Zach Pangelin and kick for kick. They both have been on strong on song today. Pan, uh, the Archibald starts it out to the right. It stays out to the right. It's going to stay a nine-point lead in favor of Mobrek. 31-22, but just three minutes in, we've seen scores by both these sides. Should be a fantastic. Here's a try again. Look at Taylor Howden. There's the step, and there he's looking at how he keeps his hands free. He sees his men out wide. There's a nice long pass out wide. Hunter Leland with another hand in it. 
and then the big powerful run ahead by John Godinet. There's the restart again for on back. A little slow this time. I think that try kind of energizes Denver team. They look good. And there's Brendan Shea again. Another strong performance from him so far today. He scored a try in that first half. And there's a penalty. Uh oh. This could be yellow for on back. Captain, four. Ian Denham. Captain, for the, for the second guy in there. Tackle assist. Still has to release. Then go back in, back in after the ball. Once yeah, someone is bound on him, no more yeah, hands. This is the last guy. one. He thought he was, he thought he was down on second guy. La last one. There's the last warning issued by referee Kurt Weaver. So I'm back is on the watch. Sorry it's going to be that. a full arm penalty. Taylor Howden now trying to pick up some territory. That was Ty Tui Samoa that the referee pinged. He said hands in. Not releasing the tackle player. And that's a nice touch finder by Taylor Howden inside the midfield stripe where it's going to be a Denver put in. And again, Dan Power, just the Denver seems a little bit more energized after that last try. Yeah, they gave up the early penalty, but they've got a little bit of a hop in their step now. Right, come on in. Come and we on see in, Taylor Mark. Howden starting to energize his back line, always communicating Howden. He's got Malifa outside him. What a good looking back line that is. Have what it. a movement here from the lineup. They go short. <laughs> that well, was a long run for a short <laughs> fly for the Barbarians. It comes out now. Howden moves it to Malifa. He dummies inside. He's straight through Malifa. Can he link up with some support? He's got Shea on his inside. Leyland on the outside, lets them all go. Finally gets the ball away to replace with Moreno. He goes straight to ground. They're on the 22. Barbarians on attack. This is better stuff from them. Beautiful ball. Ledger tucks it in. The archville now. He stepped. He's through. He's met with solid contact, though. Good recovery there from the hooker. Weiss. But they're still met. Release Barbarians ball head. inside the 22. On back, scrambling to get back on defense. It comes across to Howden. He lets one go through. That was Warner. It goes to Malifa. He dummies, goes behind. One arm hop load to Leland. Can he get Backward. it free? Ball goes down. Back to Malifa. Oh, the big man. Got a net. Can he get through? Not this time. What a go great ahead. tackle from Denham. Low chops him down. Jennings now. He moves it to the right. The big man, Ledger. He just rumbles forward. Good stuff from Ledger. He's on his feet, though. Got to oh, get wait, down. Five. He does well. Blue five Jennings out of there. sticking around for the ball. They push him to the right. The Archibald. What's he do? Cut pass. Colin Short to big Yoshi Masik on the wing. The big prop showing some speed out the there. Ball. He won't make it though as he's held up. On back has done well here. He needs to get to Here's ground. The Good choke tackle from On back. Ball comes down. For it. It's turned over. Backward. On back ball. Backward. Great stuff from Old Mission Beach. Fakes the kick. Pulls it down. Comes the big man, Tarore. He's met. They'd want to clear this here on back. They don't want to play around at this end of the field. Denham. He passes across to Holder. Whoa, cooler heads prevails. Holder drives this ball over halfway. What a good clearing kick from him, Brian Bazard. Oh, wow. That was dangerous for Ombak. If you're an Ombak supporter, inside their five meter line, could not get that secured ball back. And then Will Holder, there's their captain, Ian Denham. What a big had tackle he had on John Godinet, who scored a try earlier, going through about three or four Ombak tacklers. But a nice ankle tackle by the skipper, Ian Denham. And what a beautiful kick by Will Holder playing his first game ever in the blue and white jersey for Ombak. And there's the steal by Ombak. That's gonna get caught in right up by the goal line. That's where it's got caught up. And now the Ooh, steal. Kev. You see the whole Ombak back row in there. They're the ones who made the work to make that ball possible. And that replay, instant replay is brought to you by Alpha Graphics. Increase your reach with Alpha Graphics. Alpha Greek, Alpha Graphics.com. There's a little chip over the top. I think he's in front of the player. In the yep, in front of the kicker that time, Max Diarcho all was. And that's going to be a full arm penalty for Ombak. Now what do you do, Dan? Do you the find place. the territory? I think Ian Denham is. Kick. Kick or do you get the three points? Or the Not try here. for three points? Zach oh, Angelina has just been on fire. I think he's the one who's going to make this decision. Nope. Ian Denham says, let's put it in the corner. Let's score this try. Not the... Uh, the distance maybe Pangelina wanted just inside the 22 meter line, but it is going to be an on back throw trying to keep the attack going forward. Wanted to match that Denver Barbarians try that we saw early Open in the up, second Black. half. They got a nine point lead, 31 Five. to 22. And the on back, the, the line out just Witka Wicky, nice take on that ball, number six for on back. Outstanding ball. athlete. He's fine, he's through the middle. Um, back's got to get that ball back. Use it. Denver's very scrappy. Oh, they did not use it. It's going to be 
Tommy Pass, a wonderful on, job driving over that ball. That's going to retain possession for their, that's going to steal possession for this Denver side. It's such a tenacious back row, isn't it? Tommy Pass, Brennan Shea, we've seen Bertrand, he's not here this week. Warner stepped in and done a fantastic job. They just do such a good job cleaning up messes for this Barbarian side. Yeah, very athletic. We've seen him put in strong performances every game we've seen him. Let's see if we can take a look at it here. The drive, there you see the ball go to Florida. And look at the counter drive by the Barbarians. There you saw it right at the tail end. And it's gonna be a Denver scrum here. As you see, Andrew Locke tying up his boots. Referee waiting for that. Will Jennings, a replacement scrum app. He's been in here for most of the game. Tyson Meek was out early on with a head gash and he never came back. Will Jennings has been playing very effective for this Denver Barbarian side. And let's see what the Barbos do here deep. Crouch. There's about uh, 10 Fine. minutes gone here in the second half. Set. I'm back at 31, Denver Barbarians 22. And again, they're gonna again. get called for that boring in the scrum. And it's the same prop, Josh Bart, that's gonna be called on the left-hand side. The yeah, these pressure-leaving penalties could come back to haunt them on back. We saw them last week running down a lead against Santa Monica. You would hope they would have learned their lesson from that, having achieved it and not giving it up this week. Well, it just seems so senseless. I mean, especially when you got a guy like Taylor Howden that can do so much damage with a kick. There's the bore inside. There's the uh, loose head prop was called for that. Josh Bart, number one for on back. Where it's going to be a Denver line out now inside the midfield line. Trying to get within a try of this on back side. Nice line out take. Good ball back out. Taylor Howden. Gets it out to Brendan Shea. Brendan Shea meets Ty Tuisamoa. And here's Brent Denver with some numbers out to the right. Taylor Howden sees some space. He stabs a kick through, finds Zach Pangeline and good cover from the fly half around back. And he puts a high kick in. Didn't get much territory. He was behind the 22 and he gathered it in, but didn't pick up all the territory. Definitely not the distance he was looking for on that kick. Still 40 out from the line with the Barbarians ball. Nine points behind. The change has come. Miller, the hook has been replaced by Moreno. That was made at half time. You see him with the ball there in the 18 jersey. Throw is good down the middle. Good contest taken by on back though. Mallon with the steal. Comes down to Weiss, the hooker. He goes to Catret. He gets pulled down. Nice little offload from the winger. Still on back, they take it into the Barbarians half. It comes to Mallon, he charges onto the ball, the Irishman. Goes back in, Locke, he moves it to the left. It comes to the hooker, Weiss. He's been busy these last few plays. He's met, they've made a few meters on that play. Still, about 38 from the line. Comes to Pangeline, looks inside. Alex to go to the outside, finds the big man there. The six, that's Witwicky. Witkowicki, yep, Jeff Witkowicki does well. Good stuff there from on back. And here's on back. Gets it out to Zach Pangelin. Now there's a Denver player. No, an on back player down on the floor. Release lock. Pangelin does well. He gets that ball back to Andrew Locke. Quickly into space. That could have been too quickly, I think. Yep. And that was a call on the Sioni Ledger. On back does a quick tap. Pat Mallon, he's got two barbos. He's at the five meter line. On back's looking for more here. Slow in getting that ball. They're looking for Zach Pangelin. They don't find it, but they do get the ball, retain possession. Zach Pangelin and gets that out to Ty Tui Samoa. Tui Samoa sees the line and he sees the try. And he grounds the ball for Ombak's try. Wow, what a big, powerful run by the Eagle Hook. Eagle Lock, Ty Tui Samoa. Yeah, Jason Woods, the coach for Ombak, really stressed to us that he was expecting big things from Tui Samoa. He's been away over in England on a trial for a contract yep. over there. Zero. Unfortunately, and things traveling. didn't work out and for traveling. him. And here we see the replay, Pendulin to, to, to uh, Tui Samoa. Oh, he's a big man. He's so tough to stop from that distance. You see him putting the ball over the line there. But Woods was telling us the trial in England didn't work. He got very minimal time with the USA Eagles in the World Cup qualifiers. So he expected big things from him. And he delivered there for his coach. Yeah, he was very prophetic. He said, I wouldn't want to be the guy that stands in front of Tai Tui Samoa today with the goal line in sight. And that's exactly what happened. Tai Tui Samoa, big, powerful run. And Zach Pendulin and should add these extras. He's been spot on today for the most part. Yeah, he is a big man, Tui Samoa. There's two places I wouldn't want to be in front of him, and that's the try line. The other is in the line to the hungy with the family. You'd lose both. And it looks like Johnny Warner was a bit shaken up for the Barbarians. He's come out of the game. 
We'll get a replacement number as soon as we can for you. But Johnny Warner, who's played well in that Denver Barbarian back line. Looks like and Nikki Famosili has also come into the game for the Denver Barbarians out on the wing. It looks like the big cat in 19, Jake Humphreys, has come on to replace Warner. He's uh, Mr. CrossFit, as he's known in Denver. If you are, if you are lucky enough, I should say, to know Jake, he'll constantly be updating you with videos of him power cleaning and squatting mountains of weight. Let's just hope it transfers onto the rugby pitch for the Barbarians. Here's Max Archibald with a restart. Nice high kick again. There's Tommy Pass this time chasing. Jess Witkowicki for Ambach secures possession nicely for the blue and white. Zach Pangelinen gets it out to Ian Denham. There's some space out wide. Holder gets it out to Leah, Tiga, Leah Tigaga. Leah Tigaga sets it. Well, Andrew Locke has trouble with it. And here's the pressure. And it's going to be kicked in nicely weighted. That was kicked through by... Yeah, that's a good call by cut referee Kurt Weaver and Zach Pangelini. He took a chance. He right, waited for that ball to be going into goal. Was it kicked forward by Black there? Yes, kicked forward by Black, down. Yeah, he got it right. He waited for that ball. He waited for that ball to be in the try zone. Behind him. I see some of the on-back players uh, looking on here in the second half, but Zach Pangelini able to ground that ball. It's going to result 11. in a 22-meter dropout with on taking the kick. Pangelin and expect another high kick here. Looks high, maybe a little long. Tommy Pask eyeing it. He lost that ball going forward. The referee's gonna, they're gonna go to the scrum or the line -up? Captain, option, scrum. So you see there, two infringements. Tommy scrum. Pask is deemed to have lost the ball forward. It then go into touch. So on back, being the beneficiary of that, get to choose whether they want the line out from the second infringement or the scrum, scrum from the first. They've elected to go up. for the scrum. And we'll see them packing oh, this okay. down about 39 meters out from their own line. It'll be an on back put in, and they are holding on to a 16 point lead here at 55 minutes into the game. Well, Denver's been very effective in replying Ouch. with some tries here Fine. once on back has scored, and they need to do the same thing again. There's a good scrum. Denver Straight with up, a shunt. Straight out. It looked like Denver had looked like Denver had that ball one going into their thing, pack, but the referee bailed out on back. It looks like the front rows were coming up on both sides. They're gonna repack it. It's gonna be an, another on back put in. Have to do much better in the scrum. They gotta secure this possession. Get it out to that back line. Crouch. Denver still Fine. very much into this match. About 25 minutes left in the contest there's another oh, scrap he put in oh again a nice quick pickup by Brendan Shea he has Denver just outside the 22 meter line now the back line Taylor Howden sees out to Malifa Malifa gets it out to Leland Leland at Archival the Archival Hello? finds some gap cutting through some on back defense Release. and it's going to be ahead. a Denver put in or a Denver ball they retain possession Will Jennings gets it out to Logan Collins Collins ahead, gets Lou. cut down slow ball coming back Play the ball. Hard rucks. Taylor Howden looking for some space. The Archival runs right into two or three on back defenders. Hotly contested and not releasing is going to be the call. Zach Pangelin was one on back player right there. And I think he got some help as well. It looked like Josh Bart, the prop, was also out there in defense. But that was a big defensive play, Dan, by this on back defense. Yeah, it certainly was. I felt. Taylor Howden looked for his winger, Nikki Falmasili. If he would have been up a little flatter, on back defense and fullback were not there. Right there, with just the Take play before look at that. A replay there. Where uh, Diarchville, this is a replay where Diarchville gets caught and they get penalized for holding on. But if Falmasili plays a little flatter, I think Howden was looking for the kick through. The winger out here, uh, Leita Gaga, he was up very How flat. How many boys? And there was a great option. Four. Could have dribbled right. that one, one through. In. Unfortunately, uh, Falmasili couldn't get on the same page as Howden. They turn it over, and now on back throw in. Back off, oh, Stolen nice. by the Barbarians, though. Nice steal by Logan Collins. He tapped it down to his big man in front. Taylor Howden. Now they're Yon. trying to pick that up. Aniki Palmasili, he's got some wheels. Zach Pangelin, again, tried to wait a little bit longer to get that ball into touch. Oh, but he does well with that left-footed kick. Good. Just creates enough space and able to kick that ball into touch. A beautiful left-footed clearing kick. Again, there's just a breakdown there between fly half out and Falmasili. The timing and the kick, Falmasili got caught flat footed on the chase there. So, again, it's just a, things just not going the Barbarians' way at the moment. But things could be going your way, Brian, okay. if you book your next 
picnic or event at Infinite Fun, Infinite Possibility, book your company picnic at Infinity Park. InfinityParkEventCenter.com. We'll get back to the action as Malifa, he goes Webb straight through. Fin. Barbarians on attack Stay again. Fin. Jennings, oh, oh, a little oh, knock on maybe. Oh. He said play on, he said oh, he's done his boy. back. Oh, players standing around. He's going to talk to his AR. I think this may come back for a knock on. Let's see, everyone stop Ryan from both sides, which indicates it probably was a knock on. Kurt Weaver's talking to the AR. Let's listen in. Oh He's my. given a try. You've got to be joking. Uh, oh saying boy. the on-back players. No. They're all pointing to the scoreboard. They saw the replay. Or they want to see the replay. Boy, everybody, you're right, Dan. Stop. And that's, a, that's lesson number one. That's the first thing you learn. Play the ref's whistle. On-back did not do that. And it was just a wall sent through. Here we Let's go, Brian. Let's take a look. Take a look. That's yep. a knock-on. Oh, my goodness. That's boy. a knock-on. That's a bad knock-on. And you know, on that earlier line-out, it did not go five meters. And you saw the... Assistant referee signal, it did not go five meters on that quick line out up front, but the referee did not see it. He played on as well, but a big, big try by Denver. It makes you wonder, they've got the facilities here and the access to this replay on the big screen. Why not just wait a few seconds and have a look at the screen and then make your decision? At least it'll be the right decision. And uh, the Archville, as you'd expect, slot sack conversion. And like you said, the Barbo is going tit for tat with on back here, 38 points to 29, and we are coming down to 20 minutes to go. It's going to be a big 20 minutes for both clubs. Well, it seems like when on back punches once, Denver comes back and punches again. Both kickers have been spot on. Every point is valuable. Another nice high restart in the field of play. Denver, yep, they're going to come down with it. Boy, those are possessions that on back should be coming down with. I mean, those are beautiful kicks. But Denver's done well. Outside the 22 meter line, they've done well when they got the ball in their back line. Akam Malifa that time goes right through his hands. Brendan Shea goes back quickly to Gavin. It's still Denver ball. Taylor Howden, now he would have kicked it right up Max DiArchel's backside. I think Logan Collins finds some men out wide. Denver on the attack also, out again, outside the 22. There's a Denver player slow getting up as they retain possession. That was Kyle Hitch. Nice strong run, good strong run by Denver. They retain possession. There's only one man there. They don't counter ruck though. Denver not picking up too much territory, but retaining possession. They're down to 14 men. There's a Denver player on the field hurt. There's the ball spun out wide. That was knocked forward by Tommy Pass. Either gonna play the knock forward, yep. And it came off Tommy Pass's arm and that's gonna be a big break for Rombax. Jess Wick Wicky slow for on back. Can't identify the Denver player at this point, but a couple of players slow getting up. I think oh, it might, might be the captain, Logan Collins. Oh, boy, that would be a huge loss here in the last 20 minutes of play. Time is off. Water is on if you want it. It doesn't seem to be too serious an injury. It could be something facial. could be a cut because he's up on all fours. He may have just had the wind knocked out of him. Here we have a look at the replay. Long looping pass from Howden. Tommy Pask unable to pull it in. And thankfully for the on-back faithful and fans, he does call that okay, knock-on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, looked like a, one looked like a little bit of space no, out off. wide. And there we see the youth rugby. Play youth rugby with our youth rugby program. That's the Glendale youth rugby program. All skill levels welcome. Captain, okay. Register online at glendaleraptors.com. Collins back to his feet. He will rejoin proceedings as he right, saunters over to the scrum. Yeah, a big scrum right here. <laughs> Pat Mallon, the back of the down back scrum. Last scrum that Denver had was pretty good. We've got Ron Tefeli back on now. Sione Fine. Ledger has been replaced. Usually a second half player. Tefeli started on the bench today. He's on the field. He's a great scrummager, Tefeli. Messy scrum. Straight on again. We'll pull it up. Have it They'll reset it. They're really Football. competing hard in these scrums, aren't they? Oh, yeah. And Dan, it's a weird, it's an interesting on back back line. There's the winger Catret all the way on the sideline. Him and Ian Denham. Looks like they got something going on wide. That could just draw, try to draw the defense out wide, and they might have something going on a little tighter. Crouch. Usually, when you Fine. got it set up like this, there's a little Cut. bit of smoke and mirrors goes on between yep. 10, 12, and 13. Watch the blind winger, too. Late Gaga. Watch him to loop around as the ball comes out. Lock to Pendulian. There goes that when he hits short. Oh, oh great tackle there from Malifa. He read it beautifully. 
He's hit hard still. No Locke moves the ball to the left. Pangelian with Denham. He's also hit well from Kyle Hit. Not going anywhere on back at the moment. They there, retain no, possession as Locke goes in. He moves it to the right. Pangelian short to his prop Willis. Back. He's tackled. Met well. Pangelian moves to the right again. Holder looping past to nobody. Could be trouble as Falmasili can get here first. Oh, he can't. Ball goes over the sideline. They'll play it quick though. Play yes. On. Malifa plays on. Can he get it away? He does. Big man, Tefeli. He's got the ball now. They're just short of halfway. Jennings looks. No one at home. Does he box? No, he goes short to Masik. Oh, great run from Yoshi as he takes it up to the halfway line. Referee will get it though. Oh. Going straight down. <laughs> quick tap. Nope. nope. Out of behind. Out of behind. Kurt Weaver won't allow the quick tap from uh, Will Holder. He wanted to go. They'll slow things down. Let's see if uh, Pendulin takes another shot from halfway though. Boy, Holder did a good job on that tackle. Good shoestring me. tackle. That led to that penalty. Looks like Ombak's going to have oh, a replacement here. Let's see if we can see. Uh, oh, we got an injured player again for Denver. It looks like Kyle hit. Getting a little bit of attention. Captain, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Okay. We're going to keep going. Or do you want to? It will be interesting. I think you heard the referee say we're going to keep going. Play. We're going to play yeah. on. Sorry, it's head. It's head. We'll stop. Oh, this is time next, is off. So they're going to take the time. Time is off, guys. Let's see, uh, look at that replay. There we saw the penalty. It's going straight to the floor on the Barbarians. Will Holder tried a quick tap penalty. Referee said, nope, doesn't work. We got a man down. Yeah, Ombak made a good replacement here. Number 19, Pat Blair has come on. Some of you remember him from the Serevi 7s tournament here last year. He played with the All-Americans, and he was outstanding. Now he's joined the US 7s residency program out in San Diego, and he's coming off on Gil. the bench here. What an outstanding young talent. He's in the 19 jersey. You'll see him How there on the, the offside line. Screen with the uh, the frosty blonde tips in there, yep, uh, the yep. California hairdo. Thanks. Got a little, while we've got a little break in play, we'll tell you a little bit more about the Infinity Park Points? Event okay. Center. Infinite fun and infinite possibilities. So Book your company picnic back. at Infinity Park. InfinityParkEventCenter.com. And it'll be an interesting decision here. Well, it looks like he's got the All tea right, in hand of Zach Pangelin, and I think they're gonna go for goal here. here. Water Try off. Increase their lead right now. They're leading 38 to 29, nine point lead with about 18 minutes left in this game. Zach Pangelin is on. teeing the ball up. And there's Kyle Hitt. He's back at it. Got a little neck check, but he's ready to go. And here's Zach Pangelin and lining up another long range kick. We saw just at the end of the first half him striking right at the midfield stripe. So in his range, and he's been spot on as far as accuracy so far today. This to widen the lead to 12 points. Watch. He struck it, but it's going to carry the left of the poles. I think he had the distance on that time, but it just flooded a little left of the poles, and the lead remains 38 to 29 in favor of the blue and white of Ombak. And this is a, uh, the two teams out here today, I mean, they have a long history of some top quality yeah, games. I remember we played against the Barbarians a number of times in the Final Four. I'm back representing the Pacific Coast, Denver representing the West, but always had some wonderful battles and lots of talented players up and down the lineup for many, many years on both these sides. There's Tui Samoa all alone. Oh, and that's gonna be a knock on by the Denver advantage. Barbarians. Uh, referee said he's playing the advantage. Oh, uh, I don't know about that call by Andrew Locke. Pat Blair, yeah, he's in front of Guys, the tap. No advantage, we're gonna come back. Yeah, they're they're gonna come back to the tap. A lot, lot went on in this last passage right there. That call is a fly half Thanks. playing scrum half for you. <laughs> there was face back there, but you see the box kick is a very, it's here. a technical kick and you've got guys who practice it are good at it. Andy Locke, no discredit to him, he's a great player, but. Well, I thought the, I thought the play on was on early. If Thank the you. forwards would have picked that ball up, I think there was some room out wide. But there's the tap back, and that's what, uh, you saw Andrew Locke, yeah, it might not have been Crouch. the best decision. He was all alone. Fine. There's too many guys tied in, but here I'm back now at the scrum looking for some stable ball. It's going to come back. Pat Mallon does well. Andrew Locke gets it out to Pangilinan, to Will Holder. They're looking for the loop. Lee Tagaga finds Will Holder. Will Holder in his first game for Ombak has been strong. A nice little Away, top up to Black. Pat Blair. Ombak has to have numbers out wide. There's Mallon, another play in, in the open Away, play for the number eight for Ombak. Ian Denham at fly half, he gets out to Holder. Holder had Tui Samoa outside of him. They drive over Tui Samoa, big pickup. Oh, that could be a penalty for Denver. 
Nope, referee said play on. That ball is an errant pass. Pat Mallon picks it up, does well for a fend on his opposite, Tommy Pass. But the ball now back outside the 22 meter line. Zach Pangelin and gets it out to Ian Denham. Denham to Will Holder, defense is coming up quickly. He's gonna be all alone there. He does well. Oh, and Nikki Famasili. Oh, Atta Malifa. Somebody was called for coming in from the side. I'm not sure if it was Atta that call, was called for coming in from the side, but that was a huge break for Ambeck because Atta had plenty of green in front of him. You're fine if you start from the last foot. You're not coming back to the last foot before you go after the ball. We gotta get back to the last foot. A ruck was formed, they blew them out. Back to the last foot first. Thank you. Well, there's the explanation. It was Atta Malifa that was the guilty party. And now here's Zach Pangelin. And let's see if we can take another look at it, Dan. So you see Malifa out to the side there. Okay, so he's got... I'll be out that again, Gil. Yeah, yeah. the on-back player joined the ruck, so the ball was technically still in the ruck. So he, it was kind of in between, and he'd never really got himself onside there, Malifa. And wasn't entitled to play the ball. So good call from Kurt Weaver there. And this could be a costly call. We saw Pendley and missed before from long range. This is definitely in his wheelhouse and will extend them out to a 12 point lead with just under 14 minutes to play. Low driving kick. <laughs> Touch judges like it, flags go up. It is good, it'll take it out to 41 points to 29. Like we said, a 12 point lead. There's Jason Woods just checking out the scoreboard, doing a little bit of mathematics in his head, the big fella trying to figure out uh, what they've got One to hold time. on to here over the next 13 and a half minutes. Another uh, penalty kick by Zach Pangelini. He's made Denver pay for just about every mistake they've made. And again, that uh, is now a 12 point lead, 41-29. And here's Max Archival. Boy, Collins really got a jump on that ball. It looked like he was offside on the kick, but the referee said play on. He's able to tap that ball down to Tommy Pass. And now let's see what can Denver can do. They get that out wide. Max Archival does well to bring that ball down. Taylor Howden back inside to Atta Malifa. Malifa quickly recycles. Hunter Leland at the bail, tail of that ruck. There's Brendan Shea. He's been strong again. A nice little cutback again. Inside the 22. Still on his feet. All the way down to 10 meters out. Quick ball back. They've got to have some room out here. Max Archival gets it out to Howden. Howden the pass out to Aniki Falmasili again. What, a, what an outstanding try by Falmasili and the Denver Barbarians. Yeah, it looks like he finally got on the page with Howden there. What a great flat ball from him. Straight out to Falmasili. Too much pace for Leia to, that, to Gaga, and he races into the corner. I think that's actually Falmasili's first try of the year, which for the wingers taking him 10 weeks to get over. Here's a replay. What a great ball here from Howden. Misses out two players and Falmasili. Too much speed there as he crosses over. Nice little uh, work there from the winger. Good winger's try. And look how happy he is too, getting his first try of the year. Breaking the duck, Falmasili. Good stuff from Aniki Falmasili. Boy, another quick reply. I mean, time and time again, we've seen Ambak put some points on the board. And then Denver, within the next minute or two, replying with a beautiful try that goes through a number of hands. We've seen another one right there. That's their, at least their fourth. They're, they get a bonus point for that. Ambak's already got a bonus point for tries as well. But now it's all about the victory. Both teams wanting to win. Falmasili trying to make this a five-point game. Nope. The Archival, the Archival rally trying to make this a five point game. That ball slides wide, so it's still a seven point game in favor of Ambak. And this is what set it all up, Brian. It was Brian, uh, Brendan Shea. Nothing much on here. The loose board just does a bit of dancing, gets right through. That got the Denver Barbarians on the front foot that allowed him, the Archival and Howden to link before finally that flat pass out to Falmasili to dot it down for the try. You know, we've seen that quite often. The on-back tacklers Play going high and Denver able to shield the defenders away. There's Tommy Pask. Again, we've called his name out a lot today. Dick Green, another restart. Taylor Howden gets it out wide to Atta Malifa. Malifa caught in the tackle by Ian Lee. Denham. And this time it's a Denver penalty. Not releasing the tackled player. And this will allow Taylor Howden to pick up some territory. And again, we're in for an ancient last 10 minutes of play from both these sides. A seven point on back lead, 41 to 34. One more time. Howden wants to make sure he finds touch here, and he does right about midfield, I would expect. Right on the stripe. And it's going to
going to be a Denver, a Denver Barbarian put in here on this line out. Well, you hear the Denver fans here trying to pick up their green and white team. Come on it's in, guys. A, a We're in. Come on in. Round 10 PRP match. Come on in. We've seen plenty of highlight reel stuff. Oh, that's not straight to Ombak's favor. Pat Mallon finds a little bit of space. He's looking for. Oh, wait, help. off his head. Release. Denver trying to keep him up, but that ball goes to the floor. Here's Ty Tui Samoa. He dances a little bit, but Denver brings him down quickly. Gets it out to Ian Denham. Denham to Will Holder. Quickly up again. Leah Tagaga settles that ball. It's going to be an Ombak recycled possession. Ian Denham playing fly half now. It's a great interchange. It's, I think. Pangelini goes sometimes, Ian Denham goes other times. That That's time fine. it was Ian Denham. He sets Rook. the ball. They've got some men out wide. And now it's all with the forwards here. That's an on back reserve. Back. James DeLeo. DeLeo gets it out wide. And here's Leah Tagaga. He's all alone. He gets a little bit of help. There's the knock on. There's the knock on Denver was looking for. And that was number 14. They've given, up four, on sorry, they've, they've given up 41 points today. Denver, the highlight of their last few weeks has been their stout defense. They've really yep. gone back to it in this last 10, 15 minutes. What number minutes. is that, Gil? They've tried to really yep. strangle the on-back defense, in, uh, sorry, the on-back offense into making some mistakes. It's starting to pay dividends for them. We're down to about eight what minutes number? now. Still on-back 41. Denver Barbarians 34. It's going to take a converted try to score this game. So if you are on-back and if you're... See a Crouch. Denver guy going in for the try. Fine. Keep away from the pole. Come on up. Up again. We're under eight minutes. As you see, cut referee Kurt Weaver. He's just. Guys, Rob Moreno is trying to figure okay. out what he go. wants. Here we go. We're okay. Sneaky Moreno trying to pick up any yard he can. A veteran move from Moreno there. Crouch. Find. That ball was wheeled. Out, that out. scrum was wheeled. The ball's Backwards. out, though. Oh, and that's going to be trouble. Is Denver going to win this ball? Boy, it's a, oh, he was standing. Good. He was standing on the touchline. The referee said, "Play on." Adam Malifa gets out wide. There's Maxi Archibald gets it out wide. Is that Kyle hit? That might Maxie be Mike Garrity on yeah, the Yeah, Mike Garrity may have come in, get some fresh bodies in. But they do well. And there's Taylor Howden. Recycles possession, gets it out to Aniki Famasuli. You can't let that boy get into some dangerous space. He's got the wheels to find, to punish any kind of territory. And there's hands in. Boy, Denver, I think Denver wants yellow. Time's off, guys. Come on in. He's already worn him once, and he's reaching. Captain. This could be a big blow. Captain, come on in. Uh-oh. Well, he's reaching. This doesn't look good for Pat Blair. The rocket's formed over you. The ruck is formed over him, Captain. We talked about it. Pat Blair is gone for the rest of the day. I'm back playing these last seven and a half minutes with 14 with minutes. Time on. So that is going to be a big ask. And they do hold on to a seven-point lead. Right but down 14 men after playing 72 minutes of rugby already. That's going to be a huge ask for I'm back to hold on to here, especially with Howden clearing oh. this ball way down into I'm back territory. And wow. like you said, how important. They're probably... If they do give up the try, how important is it to keep him away from the post? Let's have a look at the replay. You see Blair there in 19, and he's just all over. He never released a tackle player, and then he grabs, grabs the Four. ball out of Jennings' hand. Four. Five. That's, uh, Five. That's just inexcusable there from the 19 player. Nope. And here we Guys, go. Hang on. Guys, hang on. Line out in. What have, have we got again. here from the referee? Have it again. No have quick, both sides are adding people. Have a clear tunnel. Both Looks sides are like people. Both teams encroached there, so. Guys, we're gonna get in, we're gonna get out. Two wrongs Hang don't on. make a right, so we'll reset it. And we're gonna throw this line out again. Wait for Moreno, it. Moreno, ball in hand. This is huge here for the Barbarians to pull this line out down. Point out. Have it. Two. He's the target. It's stolen, Kick, it looks on. like. Looks like they've got it back. Good job from Moreno, the hooker, to get in there and grab it. Jennings now, moves it to Howden. He lets two go, finds Malifa. Forward. Wayward pass, it's picked uh -oh. up by Holder. It's going to be a foot race. Holder and foul Masili. He's, He's coming across. Will Wayward go, he steps in. He's lost his footing, Holder. Little flick inside to Lechikaga. He's smashed by the Archival. Great low tackle from him. Nope. Still no turned over again now. Howden, Jennings, Malifa. Okay, the big prop, Ron Tefeli. Short ball. That's Mike Garrity. He beats one, steps inside. This is exciting stuff here from both teams. 
Jennings picks up and goes down the blind side. There's no value there as he's met by Ombak. Still with Ron Tefeli, the Barbarians have the ball inside Ombak's half. Yes, Jennings sticking in. Let's see if they settle things down. Diarchable, he moves it out to the left. Malifa throws the dummy. No one falls for it, especially Torore, the man tackling him in 13. It goes down again, Jennings now. Use it. Not much options here, goes to the right to Collins. A lot of Barbarians players walking around. Garrity pulls it into Masick. We've seen him on that wing a few times today, the big fella. He's met, they're about 30 out from the line now. Jennings steps in again. It goes to Leland. Hits it short to Archville. He's through Archville. Can he link up back with Leland? Oh, Hunter Leland, he'll score. This will level it up. Oh, great oh, stuff from the Barbarians. We have a huge kick coming from the Archville to tie things up here with just five minutes to play. What a big run. I think it was Masick that really did some damage. He put a couple of on-back players down. That made him short-handed and then quick ball out. The big break by Max the Archival, and then the little pop pass up to Hunter Leland. What another a great team try for Denver. We've seen five or six team try. Let's take a look at this replay. Again, there's the break by Max the Archival. Stays on his feet then finds Hunter Leland on the outside. You saw pointing to get to the post, but this should still be very makeable for Max DiArchival. An important kick, still five minutes left in the match, but this conversion attempt to tie the match. This, uh, this would be, if, if DiArchival can convert this, would be tied up at 41 each. We have yet to see a draw in the PRP, I think. Uh, so no golden point, there's no extra time during the regular season, it would end in a tie. They would share the points, I believe three points each, two for the draw and one for the bonus point for four <laughs> tries each. As Diarchville lines this up, what an important kick. An eerie hush comes over Infinity Park here as he steps in. Look at that, straight down the middle, no pressure for Diarchville, he converts. We are all tied up. Strap yourselves in for an exciting last four minutes here. 41 to 41, on back, and the Denver Barbarians all tied up. Boy, this is a game we thought it was going to be, and both teams know the importance of this match. They want to come away with a victory. There's only four minutes left. And I think Pange Linden, why he's not taking the restarts, maybe he hit her leg a little bit, I'm not sure, but Will Holder, not a bad replacement. He's come in to take this next restart. Not quite as high, a little deeper, and it's going to go straight down to Max DiArchival, who pounds it, or Will Jennings that was, who pounds it right back to Ombak. He's in touch, but the referee said play on with that quick line out. And it's gonna be Zach Pangelin and looking for some space. We haven't seen him do too many shimmies today. He finally finds a little gap, gets it inside the midfield line, and it's gonna be on back possession. They get out to Ian Denham playing fly half. How wide to Will Holder. Holder cuts back inside. He finds a little bit of gap, but then he's such, oh, he's smothered referee. Yeah, he's playing the advantage. Has a penalty against Atta Malifa. It looked like he was in an offside position. Let's see how long he plays the advantage of Zach Pangelin, and he's caught up in the tackle. Is the referee gonna bring that ball back? Because it's a makeable kick for Pangelin. And there's Ethan Willis, he takes it. Yep, he's gonna bring it back. Nothing going on. It's gonna be about a 49 meter effort if Zach Pangelin, Pangelin and wants to take a shot. This is about the same position he missed earlier. They give the ball to Will Holder. Does that mean that Pangelin is not doing the kicking? Yeah, you might be right. There may be an injury here for Pangelin to take this shot. The one he missed from here earlier, it Don't sounded worry. very, you could hear it, very <laughs> slappy off his foot. He did not hit it as well as he's been hitting him. And they've just sent the tee off the field. He doesn't want to have a shot. So maybe that's playing with his head a little bit, that miss from earlier. Holder, that's a nice kick. That'll drive that into the 22. Yeah, just See outside the 22 meter line. And, and, and remember, here's where here's where drop kicks come into play. And there's there's the play where, yeah, and there's Atom Lee, but coming from an offside position, he kicks that ball away. The referee was right in front of it. Now it's going to be an on back I'm throw in. in. James Dalio for on back to reserve hooker. He's come in. He's going to go to the front. His bat is straight down, but right to Dalio, and he takes it. He's going to stay in touch. Good field awareness. He's going to get that ball down. Yes, good strength by the reserve hooker. Gets it out to Pangolin and that fly half. Will Holder spins it out wide to Ian Denham. Denham finds a seam, but good tackle in the midfield and the open field by the Denver Barbarians. On back now. Ty Tui Samoa inside Release the 22 meter line. No Zach Pangelin, is he looking for 22? Not yet. There's Derek Broussard, number 18, another reserve. Now are they looking for drop kicks? No. Oh, they got They need help. They need some support play. There they are. Number 16, Dalio again with support. Zach Pangelin gets it out. Ian Denham, it's a wall of green out wide. Tommy Pask and Brendan Shea out there as well for Denver. 
they got to start thinking drop kicks, I would think. Ethan Willis, he juggles the ball a little bit. Zach Pangelinian tried to find a seam. Oh, that looked like offside. No, nope. referee said play on. It's going to be a knock on. What a break that time for the Denver Barbarian. It's going to be a Barbarian put in. We're under a minute, folks. We're about, we got 30 seconds left on the clock. And it's been an exciting clash. Let's see how this game plays out. Time is off. And we do have a Denver Barbarian Time play. Time is off. Down. Oh my goodness, what a passage of play, Dan. Oh, it's very exciting stuff. A real cliffhanger hanger here at the end. And remember, we did have some injuries. Collins went down, Hit went down. We lost those players, so there will be some injury time. The stadium clock reads 79.34, so about 30 seconds to go here. We have, looks like Moreno down on his back now. Okay. And here we go. Don't go anywhere. Don't turn off your computer screen, because right next, the Glendale Raptors will be taking on Park City Haggis right here, scheduled at 3 p.m., but uh, probably closer to 3.15 if you are watching at home. That will, of course, be live right here on the Rugby Town USA Ustream channel. Yeah, and a little surprised Zach Pangelin and or Ian Denham didn't line up for a drop goal. I mean, they had a couple of balls right in front of the sticks. I don't even think they were thinking of it at that point. Now, I, I wonder if there is an injury to Pangelin that's inhibiting his kicking because he didn't even seem interested in the penalty. And then he was very flat. He, he should have pulled a couple of forwards out. Set up a nice ruck and then got the ball back. So set himself 10, 15 meters behind the ruck yeah. and had a shot at the oh, wait, field I'm sorry, goal. I'm sorry, hang on. They, they didn't even look hang like on, getting that formation on. once. Well, big All scrum right, here coming up for the Denver Barbarians. Okay, guys. Still here we getting are. Water attention off, on the field. I think that was number 19. Thank you, Physio. Uh, for the Barbarian, Jake Humphrey. Time is so he's getting some help. So big scrum for both these sides. We haven't seen a steal, I don't think, this whole game. And Tommy Paskey likes to go around the right-hand side. And here we are, folks. 30 seconds left. No, I don't, I don't think a score. draw works for either one of these teams in terms of the points no. they need Fine. to get the championship. They need to win. Set. Well, I'm back at played two less games than Denver. That's the one thing they have going for them. But, again, you want to get full, full Guys, package. We've got to be able to hold it. you got to wait to drive. Same thing. Here we go. What are the odds ball. of a scrum penalty right here? Wouldn't that be <laughs> tragic? Oh, boy. Couple of big boys get a little antsy, maybe a little early push or something. Everything, it just hinges here. Every little mistake Fine. is just critical at this point of the game. Set. Yeah, next whistle could do it. Shoulders on. Good strike, there's pass. Trying to make a break on the weak side. There's a good defense by Ambach, Max D. Archival. See, this is when you gotta have your discipline, especially if you're a Denver Barbarian. You can't leave your feet. You gotta hit the ruck effectively and efficiently. There's the pass that goes behind. Hunter Leland secures possession. Denver Barbarians. Oh, there's a two on two out wide with Atta Malifa. Oh, that was that obstruction. The referee said no. Atta Malifa trying to create some space. And he finds Aniki Famasili. He gets hauled down behind. Rook, no hands. By Chris Rory. Hands away. Oh, oh boy. No, now I'm back has to stay away from the penalties. They got to have this discipline here. Oh my goodness! Hands away. Just, well, it was called hands in. I don't think it was called. Boy, I think it was called on the skipper, Ian Denham, for hands in that last ruck. It wasn't just with the wiki number six who put pressure on the scrum half. He thought the ruck was over, and he played the ball. It wasn't over, and now it could be over for our back as Max Archibald has an opportunity. There you saw the little flick in that Boys, replay. here we are. We gotta make a decision, Captain. And it's gonna be Max Archville. They gotta make a decision here. There's wow. The clock I mean, is it's correct. gotta be going for poles here, I would think. The clock it's is a big kick. It's right yeah. out near the sideline. He's about 39 meters out. He's gonna elect for the point. I have that with you. But you saw him have a big conversation with not only Taylor Howden, but also Logan Collins about getting set up for this kick. Do not let me kick this and not chase the ball down. The last thing he wants to see is the ball get into a, a Pangelian, you know, hands, a holder's hands, or someone like that who can create something and go the length of the field and score and just break their heart. And did you see that little move there by Max Yardfall? He tried to put that ball in about five yards in field from where it was. The referee said, no, I'm not having any him. of that. Yeah. You get back to the mark. Thanks. Well, it's the still going to be a difficult right. kick. The tee's moved forward about three or four no yards since the guys. penalty was given. So good work from the Archful. A uh, huge kick. This will probably end the game one way or the other. If I'm back, if the kick is good, it's probably going to be a 44 to 41 victory for the Denver Barbarians. Let's take a look.
kick is away, and it's oh, oh so close. Out the back. Just to the left of the out pole. Out the back. Kale, out the back. I'm not sure what happened no, there. I don't know what's out happened. Back, guys. I don't think they're claiming Game. a try. Oh and that's full God. time. It's going to end in a draw. What an amazing ending. Uh, it looked like Ambach tried to play that kick, Zach Pangelin, and the ball went into nowhere, no man's land, and it looked like the Barbarians almost secured possession, but as it is, it ends the match. What a fantastic PRP battle we had here between two of the teams fighting to be in the top two spots. It ends 41 to 41 in a fantastic display of open rugby. We're going to come right back and wrap it up right after this. Welcome back to Infinity Park, where we just saw a barn burn of an 80-minute contest where I'm back and the Denver Barbarians tied 41 to 41. It was a fantastic offensive display, Dan Power, and uh, we saw plenty of action in that second half and throughout the game. We certainly did. We take a look at some of the action here. And we saw this man step up in the second half, Taylor Howden. I mentioned he was under a bit of a fitness cloud. You saw that. And what about the inclusion of Hunter Leland? We talked about him in the pregame. He had a fantastic game. And the big man got a net just barges his way over. At this point, they still had quite a bit to catch up. We saw a lot of tit for tat as uh, Tui Samoa drives his way over for the try here. I think at this point, they had close to a 19 point, 18 point lead. You kind of got the feeling that Ombak were just gonna, were happy to go tit for tat with Denver as long as they held on to their lead. And then things started to tr change around. The momentum shifted to the Barbarians. And that was, now that that's, helped. that's a call <laughs> that's gonna be interesting to hear about uh, during the week. Possibly a knock on there that led to the, the Jennings try. Then Fal Masili tricked over. And Denver started to apply the pressure, try to try. And then next we'll have a look. This is the one that brought them back. A beautiful little short ball here from Hunter Leland. Puts Max the Archibald through. Supports his own pass beautifully, Leland. And then brings it around for a try. You can see Big Jake Humphreys pointing him towards the post there. And we finished at 41-41. And probably a fitting result for two very equally competitive sides. Yeah, I agree. Fantastic eight minutes of rugby in this PRP battle. And we are going to wrap it up here with Ambak uh, taking off from San Diego, tying Denver Barbarians 41-41. to -41. Fantastic display. Please stay tuned. We're going to have the Glendale Park City Haggis match here shortly. Uh, Park City in Glendale, that promises to be a very exciting battle. And there you go. For more information on Infinity Park, go to infinityparkglendale.com. And this has been a presentation by the City of Glendale. All rights reserved for the City of Glendale. Read it to me. Today's match from Rugby Town USA was brought to you by the Greater Glendale Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for supporting business in the Glendale area. Alpha Graphics. Increase your reach with Alpha Graphics. AlphaGraphics.com.
Hyatt Place. Hyatt Place is the highest in guest satisfaction. Enjoy this upscale hotel. Hyatt Place, Denver, Cherry Creek. And by O'Brien Rugby. For all your rugby needs, O'BrienRugby.com. Hey, hey, hon, would you say it's more circular or spiral? Because it's it's spiral, it's serious, but uh, only if it's spiral with red dots. It's definitely spiral, but I'd say it's more bumps than dots. Uh, spiral with bumps. Oh. Enough with the internet diagnosis. Get real answers real fast. At Doctors Express, you can walk in and see our experienced physicians for everything from bumps to breaks for a fraction of the cost and wait time. Doctors Express Urgent Care. What if you could see your kids get home safely without actually being there? Or turn your lights on from somewhere else? Welcome to Xfinity Home from Comcast, the total home security and home control solution combining professional monitoring with online and mobile tools, plus text and email alerts, remote alarm and light controls, and remote video monitoring. This is home security reimagined. Xfinity Home from Comcast. Learn more at Xfinity.com home. is perfect, or at least it will be, with a little help from Dex. In the book or at DexKnows.com. Dex can help you get results fast and deliver the best local advice so you can get it done right, right here, right now. We should do this more often. Dex, results for the here and now. <laughs> 